Yeah. Harmon sent me three rolls of Phoenix medium format 120 via Analog Wonderland after I bought it in their shop. And I was trepidatious but excited to see what I could get out of the larger negative, as my experience with the 35mm had been... <laughs> I shot my first roll of Phoenix 35mm as soon as it came out. I had been shooting film for about a month and I was already tired and broke from shooting so much portrait. It wasn't that easy to get hold of and I'm a sucker for something that's hard to get a hold of, like Goliath's Johns. Honestly I thought I was going to give up photography, at least film photography anyway. It was so difficult to get a decent picture. You have to get absolutely everything right and I'm not that good at getting everything right. I also shot most of my Phoenix through a Minolta with an f4 35mm lens on it and in not very bright conditions. The good workman never blames his tools but I'm not a good workman so I blame the tools entirely. The 35mm was wild and I'm about as wild as it gets but this level of wild was way too much even for me. The halation was out of control, the grain was out of control, the contrast and saturation were out of control. It also should be rated differently in my opinion. Rating Phoenix at 200 ISO made my life very difficult. So knowing what I know about the 35mm, I figured that the larger negative would definitely help matters and even eradicate some of these things. I got three rolls and I tried to shoot them at different times of the day and in different conditions. Early morning sun, midday sun, evening sun and cloud. I rated all three rolls at 125 ISO on a Pentax 645. The first roll was shot in what I consider to be the perfect conditions for Phoenix. Conditions we get here in the UK quite a lot. Cloudy with a chance of S-Log. The reason being that the dynamic range is not very rangy. If you're shooting in midday sun like I did on the second roll, you will have to choose which you want to prioritise, your highlights or your shadows. Overcast weather will produce much less contrast and give you a better chance of not blowing the highlights or crushing the shadows. And a few of these shots from the first roll are my favourite images. I would definitely be using these for a new project I am working on. Although I won't be shooting it all on Phoenix though, probably. I really love this image which has all of these diagonal lines which lead towards the goal and the shininess of the metal gate. The following morning I knew I was going to get better weather so I went out early with the dog. The dog who features so often when I'm either loading a film and burning frames or when I'm at the end of a roll and burning frames. It was nice to get a shot of Boo in his natural habitat and I love this shot. It maybe would have been better if I overexposed by a stop or two to get more of the highlights on the leaves around the bottom of the picture. Like most films or camera sensors that early morning golden light is really hard to beat. I don't really know what happened here, I think I took so long making sure I wasn't going to crush the highlights that I forgot to focus the thing. But I think it still works and it really shows the saturated colours off nicely. I think these early morning shots show how rowdy that halation can get. Wild. At around 1pm I went out to get some very bright daytime shots. I knew that it was going to be contrasty, I knew any light bouncing off any light surfaces was going to create halation mayhem. I think generally you can photograph some things in super harsh sunlight and it still looked great, but I did not have high hopes for these shots. Here we can see the halation, contrast, a pretty mundane subject matter all come together to make something quite mundane. But it's not terrible. And I think if this was shot on the 35mm version of Phoenix, I think it probably would have been. As the light got a lot less harsh around 6.30, I went out to grab a few shots. I pulled over by a farm and so had limited subject matter, and I honestly didn't know when the sun was going to be out next, so I made do. I also had about 5 minutes, so just grab what I could. They're nice enough. And this last one is probably my favourite shot I've ever shot with any Phoenix film. After three rolls of 35mm and three rolls of 120 I finally got a shot I like. So what do I think of Phoenix? It's great, I suppose. The saturated colours I do love, particularly the greens and the oranges. I do think in overcast weather it can look really great, but I would probably look towards a different film if shooting something contrasty. I love its quirks when they are toned down a little, which I can relate to. 
Some things are okay in small doses. Just ask anyone who's ever met me. There were only a few instances where I wasn't loving the grain, and that was always in the shadows where I prioritized the highlights. So I think going forward, I would rate this at 100, which would work better for me. I like these photographs a lot more than I like the 35mm photographs that I took. Have I edited these pictures? Of course I have. I've edited the shit out of them. I edit any photo I take, but with my film photography, I always try to stay true to the film stock. I also scan most of my negatives. I photograph them through a GFX 50S and then put them through Negative Lab Pro before editing them. I found that taking care on each shot and really going through the images one by one, I could get something I was almost happy with. I know that Naritsu and Frontier scanners do tend to struggle with this out of control, wild, blue and downright weird negative. So I'd be interested to hear any methods that anyone else has had to get good results. But for now it seems the beast has been tamed, or at least been more tamed, or probably more accurately, hasn't changed at all but looks better in medium format. And I'll be looking forward to see where this film goes in the future. Thank you for watching.